This is a follow-up video on a really great, exciting, growing cryptocurrency privacy project. And we're going to be looking at some of the applications that they have. Ready to hop in the six four and cruise around the blocks. There's a storm coming to the underworld and the heat is on. Take over the blocks and call the shots. It's time to hustle or get hustled. What's it gonna be? Stay sharp. It's a dog eat dog world out there. Don't let them catch you slipping. Only real gangsters thrive in the dope wars world. But if you decide that you want to preserve your privacy and make sure all the data that goes in and out of your computer is encrypted, then check out NordVPN. My affiliate link will give you something like a two thirds discount on some of their packages. Now, this is the second time we're talking um, and I'll say what we're talking about and what we talked about in a moment, but I invite people to subscribe bit.ly slash Crypto Rich Odyssey, uh, where I post all my material plus additional material, the likes of which does not see the does not see, does not feature on YouTube because of YouTube censorship. Please also follow me on Twitter, Crypto Rich YT. And oh my gosh, Twitter is so interesting. Twitter is so interesting. The stuff that Elon Musk is doing and the stuff that people are saying without the levels of censorship that were there before. And also please join my official Telegram announcements channel. And I'll have all the links in the description below. All right, Key, you are the CTO for Oxen, which Oxen.io, I'll have all the links below. And uh, this started in 2018. We covered it in a previous video, and Oxen is a fork of Monero, the privacy-focused uh, cryptocurrency, but it allows a couple of applications. One of them is Sessions, which is a private messaging app, and the other is LockyNet, which is an onion router. So we're going to start by talking about Sessions. Okay, right. So we've talked about Oxen, the cryptocurrency coin, privacy coin, and now you're building or have built Sessions. So what is Sessions? Yeah, so Session is an encrypted messaging application. Um, there, there's a kind of a little bit of a, um, an interesting history here because we have a lot of forks of different other projects and Session is actually a fork of Signal, um, which a lot of people may know from the private messaging space. Um, but it kind of differentiates itself from uh, Signal and from other encrypted messages in a few, in kind of three ways. Um, so first of all, it doesn't use a phone number, so you can sign up without a phone number, which is the biggest kind of, um, it's the biggest differentiator for most people. The second is that it's decentralized. It doesn't store any of its messages on any central servers. It stores them on the service node network, which we spoke about earlier in the other video. Um, and the third is that it's onion routed, so it doesn't expose your IP address uh, when you connect to um, the messaging service. So all of this combines to be a really interesting anonymity application uh, for sending messages to other users. Um, so that's kind of how I introduce session when I'm when I'm talking to people who haven't heard about it before. Okay, that's very very interesting because um, it's it's such a crowded space. You know, the, the mess. Never mind the privacy messaging space, right? But the messaging space with WhatsApp and Discord and Telegram. And I remember uh, there was a period a couple of years ago that people should move off WhatsApp and off Telegram. I was going to go on to Signal, go into Signal. I was like, I don't want another one. And then they want my phone number. right? And I think there are other um, messaging apps as well, which are quite big. And there are probably loads and loads of small ones and stuff. But yours is fully decentralized, encrypted through an Onion router. router. Through yeah, that. correct. Okay. And is it live now? Yeah, it's live now. It's uh, on all desktop systems, so Mac, Windows, and Linux, um, and also on Android and iOS. So you literally just go to the App Store and um, download it and start sending messages. And free free to use? Yeah, it's free. Okay. And how many users do you have and how they grow and how by how much are they growing? Yeah, so uh, we're estimating right now because we're a privacy uh, application. We don't know exactly how many users we have, um, but we <laughs> estimate. Of course, yeah. that's a proper privacy application, right? Like Pirate Chain yeah. doesn't have a rich list. There's no rich list yeah, exactly. for Pirate Chain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but we're estimating around four hundred thousand monthly active users right now. Um, and we saw we saw a lot of growth um, with the Iran protests recently. Um, 
that there was massive protests out there and people were looking for a messaging application that they could sign up for very easily without a phone number and that was encrypted so that the government couldn't spy on what they were doing. So we saw a huge uptick there and we've seen huge upticks in China as well um, with people there using the application. Right now, okay, I was thinking that. Now, um, because you you would have be able to tell, would you be able to tell where the downloads are happening? Well, we, we, we ourselves can't tell, but Google Play, they monitor all of those statistics and they give at least the download statistics to us. Um, so we don't collect that information ourselves, but whenever you use the Google Play Store, it's collecting information on you. So we get that. Right. Okay. All right. And, and then um, that it doesn't have a phone sign up, deli- definite, definite benefits. However, then it also means that there's more risk of scamming. An impersonation. You know, I, I've met three other crypto riches on Telegram, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely does add um, to that element because people cre- can create accounts uh, way easier. Um, there's definitely a bit more spamming um, or a bit more of a spamming problem. But we've implemented a few things um, to deal with that. So we have kind of like a friend request system where a person will send you an initial message and then you have to accept them to receive additional messages from them. Um, And that sits in a completely different folder from your normal messages. So it doesn't get clogged up with a bunch of spammers. That's all in a different section um, in the application. Okay. So and then can I delete and block people? Yeah, exactly. You can block people based on their um, unique identifier, which is actually a public private key pair. Right. And is there any sort of um, content moderation in any way or community moderation? So not not really. Uh, in, in one-to-one conversations, like if we're just talking to each other, that's completely unmoderated uh, because no one can read the messages. They're just encrypted for each other. Um, in small groups, um, up to 100 people, we call these uh, closed groups or just groups, um, you can appoint administrators, but that's up to you who you want to administer the group. It's just like if you have a family group chat, the person who creates it might be the, the administrator of it. And then we also have these things called communities, which are up to, well, they're basically unlimited growth. But the biggest ones we have right now now are about 5,000 people. And in those groups, they also um, have their own administrators as well. But that's chosen by whoever sets up the group initially. Um, so there's no like global administrator who like looks over everything and says, this is the content policy. It's just based on the groups that you join and what administrators they have. A bit like what happens on Telegram or WhatsApp. Yeah, Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Now, no, the problem with Telegram is that it's centralized um, and we yeah. don't know. And, and there's a telephone number and we don't know what's happening with that information in the back door because there's a counterparty risk. And then the, the problem with WhatsApp is that it's owned by Facebook, which is yeah. enough of a problem by itself, plus all the issues of counterparty risk and everything. And who owns Sessions? So uh, it's actually the OPTF, which is the not-for-profit uh, foundation, which owns Session. But it's a decentralized application, so it doesn't really, it's not really owned by anyone. It's owned by the Oxen kind of blockchain network, if you if you put it that way. It's the service nodes that run it, this network of 17, 1,700 service nodes that are located all around the world, who host its core infrastructure. Um, so it can't really be shut down by anyone. For example, if the OPTF came along and said we want to shut down session, which would be an idiotic move, but we'd basically have to convince every service node operator to stop hosting um, session themselves. The service node operators would just tell us to get lost, basically, um, and they would run it themselves. And there isn't really much upkeep required. They basically just need to keep their computers on and they get it rewarded in Oxford for doing that. Right. Okay. Now, um do you, you know where the service node operators are? Do they have to do any KYC, identify themselves? No, there's no KYC for the service node operators. Um, it would be similar to, say, the Ethereum validator network where the uh, the, the Oxen service node operators are located all around the world. Um, I think we have service node operators in uh, probably about uh, 20 or 30 different countries. I may be wrong. It's probably more than 40 countries at this point um, just because there's so many of them. And it's all different individual operators. So there's no there's no process required to become an operator. You just need enough oxen to stake a node, or you can become a contributor in a node as well and have someone run that for you. Um, but yeah, they're all around the world, and um, we don't know every every one of them or, or who they are. Some of them come into the community and they're community members, but you know we we don't generally have a, an idea of who everyone is. Right now, is it is it possible for 
a government to find out who a service node operator is or for an intelligence agency? Yeah, so you could probably, I mean, there's definitely service node operators out there who um, don't try to hide their identity. So you could definitely find out who they are. Um, the kind of defense against that is that there's so many different service node operators in different parts um, of, the, of, the, of different countries. Um, that one operator being compromised or even, you know, say 10% of the network of 1,700 nodes being compromised doesn't have a very large impact on the rest of the network. Um, we've made it so that when messages are stored on the network, they're kind of held redundantly. So if a large percentage of the network goes offline, you still have that message, which is stored by another percent, uh, percentage of the network. And also in Onion Routing 2, um, you have this concept of um, no one no knowing all of the information about someone's um, kind of anonymity set. So it requires a larger portion of the network being compromised to um, have an impact on someone's anonymity or the storage of their messages, for example. Right. Okay. And would it be possible for someone to be a node operator and be physically based in Iran or China? Yeah. I mean, if they, if they have the ability to uh, run a, a VPS and, uh, connect to a network that is uncensored um, and relay traffic, then they can do so. Um, networks like China and Iran, you may have difficulty doing that because they have very heavy internet censorship. Um, but definitely being a client in one of those networks is a bit easier than, than being a, at one of these nodes. Right, okay. And um, is it available as an APK and on a yeah. device repository somewhere? Yeah, so we're on uh, F-Droid, um, and we also distribute an APK um, on the on the website. So if you go to getsession.org, you can just download the APK there. Getsession.org. Okay. Now, is the code open source, or are you and the NSA secretly reading the messages? <laughs> no, the code is all open source um, on our GitHub repository. Um, you can check that out at Oxen.io. Um, so we have different repositories for session desktop, iOS, and Android. You can see all of it. And no, we're not an NSA spying operation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the NSA can also check the code and say, okay, no backdoors here. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> all right, now, um, can I send files, videos? Are there limits? On yeah, you can send, you can send attachments. Um, currently, right now, uh, the, the maximum is in between six and 10 megabytes, which is, I understand is not that large, um, but we're working on creating larger file uploads. We basically have to overhaul our onion routing system to be able to do, to be able to handle that traffic though right now. So uh, it's a bit more complex than just kind of raising an arbitrary limit. Right, okay. Now it's free currently, but it's yep. free forever. Yeah, so we're, we're hoping to have basically the current version of the application will remain free forever, but we're hoping um, that we'll also have a Session Pro um, feature. So this will be uh, for stuff like creating uh, open groups with one click um, or creating communities with one click, which are these like, you know, up to 10,000, 20,000 people communities that you can create those easy. Um, stuff like badges, avatars, custom stickers, GIFs, um, very similar to what Telegram is offering their tele Telegram Pro um, service. So the core service will always remain free, um, but we'll have something for power users if they really want to push the service to the limits. They'll be able to do that if they subscribe to um, the premium version of the application. Okay. And, and people can use sessions independently of Oxen, independently of LockyNet, and it still goes through an Onion router. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Session right now uses its own onion routing network. Um, it's not connected to LokiNet, but we're hoping to connect it up to LokiNet later. Um, but you don't need to hold any auction coins or you know um, be involved in the, the LokiNet ecosystem to, to use Session. You can just download it and use it straight away. Okay. And just very simply, uh, in layperson terms, what is an onion router? What is that? Yeah, so um, I, I, I think most people would be aware about what an IP address is, but it's like a unique identifier for every computer that's connected to a network, um, like the internet, for example. So when you visit a website, um, that website will typically know your unique identifier. It's like your home address, um, say, um, in internet land. Um, this can be quite scary to people, though, because if every website you visit knows um, this unique identifier about you, or every message you send, you're attaching this unique identifier about you, it can quickly start leading to 
um, a lot of metadata being created about you or a lot of additional data that's not just the messages being sent. Um, so for example, if I know that two people um, had a conversation at 9 uh, p.m. at night and they were located you know, near a sex club, for example, then you may, even though you don't know the contents of the message, you may be able to pull out you know, what that conversation may have been about. Um, and these are kind of the, some of the more advanced um, surveillance techniques that governments use these days. Um, so an onion router basically allows you to obfuscate your IP address. So it means that when you communicate with someone um, over a network, you're not uh, revealing information about your IP address. You actually go through a number of hops, which means that your IP address is hidden um, from, from the person who is on the other uh, end of your communications and the, the um, internet service provider who's between those as well. Um, so yeah, it's basically a, a method of hiding your unique identifier on the internet. Right, right, okay. And just got me thinking, in the UK, it's not possible to go to a Pirate Bay website because the internet service providers block Pirate Bay. So um, yeah. it's possible through privacy-focused applications like a VPN and also like LockyNet. And, exactly, yeah. Uh, and that's through the under, under router system. Okay, anything right. else you can let us know about sessions before we finish up? No, I mean, uh, if you're keen to uh, have a go with Session, uh, even if you use another messaging application, maybe you just want to have a little go, um, you can go to getsession.org um, and you can actually send me a message. Um, my name is just Kejef, K-E-E-J-E-F, um, on Session. So send me a message and I'll say hello. All right. All right. Very good. My, my only worry is right now, if I went on it, I don't... None of, I have no friends or family on there to talk to. I'm really no mates, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then what, what that's always the hard to, thing. That's right. What are you doing to address that? Why should somebody leave Telegram or WhatsApp? <clears throat> I, I can understand in Iran or China, but in um, sort of crumbling former Western liberal democracies <laughs> like the UK and Australia, why would somebody, what's the incentive? So I, I don't know if we're looking to replace like every messaging application that you have on your phone, but I think that you may use this in a context where you're you have some sensitive messaging that you want to do, for example. Um, you know, say if you are communicating with a, a doctor or you're communicating with um, you know, a partner, for example, and you didn't want any of those messages to be to be snooped on by someone else, then this is something that you may use um, for that. But we also have to remember like that Telegram, you know, was started probably five or six years ago and no one used it then, right? So mm -hmm. once you get kind of a, a mass going of people using it just for a few conversations, then it's easier to get people on board at a later point. So our focus is kind of on people using it particularly for privacy right now, but it, it makes sense to, to move from that um, to more general conversations once more people are onboarded. So that's kind of our philosophy around getting people on board. Are there any plans to integrate, excuse me, are there any plans to integrate a cryptocurrency wallet within sessions? Because that would be very useful. Yeah, I think eventually we will um, do that. We'll add um, an Oxen wallet into, into session so you can send your contacts um, Oxen. Um, it just hasn't been our priority right now because we're trying to kind of grow. And some people are really turned off by cryptocurrency. Uh, obviously, we're not because we're a crypto company. Um, mm -hmm. So it makes sense for us. But I think yeah, it has to be done in a delicate way um, so, that, so that people aren't put off um, immediately because a lot of people have this adverse reaction to cryptocurrency. So we're looking into ways to do that. Okay. Well, I'm going to say something that you may not be able to say or echo or comment on. So just to put you in the clear, uh, I, that to me is very, very promising if you're able to do that. Or I imagine there may be other cryptocurrency projects that are doing that, given the direction of travel is central bank digital currencies, where every single transaction is tracked and monitored and surveilled by the government who are then able to say, oh, no, 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 no steak for you. You have to eat bugs or you travel too far, you know, all, all that sort of WEF great reset vision that they have for us so that we'll be happy. Oh, nothing. Eat bugs. That won't make me happy. It won't make me happy. Klaus Schwab gets steak. I want steak. But but that I think is the, um, is the, uh, I don't know what the word is, the, the get out clause, the, the access to freedom, privacy, privacy focused, decentralized, censorship resistant applications that allow us to preserve our freedom, which is why I think what you're doing is just so important. 
um, and more power to your elbow. I'm going to have all the links in the description below. Thank you so much, Key. And we're going to come back and speak again about LockyNet, which is the project that, which is the application that I'm using, which is how I found out about your project quite by accident. And I think it's very, very useful indeed. So everybody, so please subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitter, CryptoRichYT. Check out sessions.org, get sessions. Check out my first video about Oxen. So you know about that as a privacy uh, cryptocurrency project. And between now and when I see you next, please keep filling your pockets with crypto profits. This is Crypto Rich and Crypto Key signing out. All the best. Bye-bye. Thanks.